Well, welcome to our last in the Living in Victory series. Uh, anybody remember what we talked about last week? You guys are off the hook because you weren't here. It's all you. Yeah, forgiveness. Forgiveness, right. Forgiveness and offenses. Um, anything that stuck out in your mind about that? <laughs> just the experience that I went through. Okay. God, but, God gave yeah. you some revelation or something, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, just the revelation and I guess we don't understand that that stuff can really eat at us. And oh, yeah. That we don't notice it too until God starts revealing it to us, so... It, yeah. there's a there's a testimony in my life where there, there was a problem between my wife and I that that was ongoing it was so frustrating because she felt it and I, and I felt it and I had no idea what to do with it and God showed me something that happened between me and my dad and it just blew that thing away between me and my wife it's like wouldn't think it was even connected but those offenses that you don't even know are there can affect all your relationships yeah mm -hmm. good stuff um, this week we're going to talk about the power of our words, and specifically word curses. Um, things that we have spoken, things that people have spoken over us, how much power the word, the spoken word can have in our lives, and, and what we say can affect so many things. So that's where we're headed this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you. Thank you for your spirit for your Holy Spirit living in us, for your authority that you give us. And God, we just ask you this morning as we get into your word that you make, make your word real to us. Make it alive in us. Like you did last week with the forgiveness. Change our hearts. Reveal things to us that, that cause us to live in a way that's pleasing and honoring to you. That set us free to live in the victory that Jesus died to give us. And Lord, we just... Praise you and thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do. By faith, we thank you that you're going to set us free and teach us this morning. And we give you praise. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I want to start out showing you some scriptures that show you the power that our words can carry. Um, we need to understand that what we say really matters whether we mean it or not. And, and I'm, I've learned to be careful even in jest not to say things that can give the enemy a place to step into my life and take authority, okay? <clears throat> As it, it really doesn't matter to him if we say I was just kidding. He's a legalistic twit and he'll use anything that he can to get a place in our lives. Listen to this, on the positive side, Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. This is God talking. It shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. Okay? So God's spoken word accomplishes things. Yes? He spoke the worlds into being, didn't he? That's a pretty powerful word. Guess what? We're the body of Christ on the earth now. Right? We're his hands and feet. We're also his voice. So he gives us authority to speak those things that he wants accomplished into our situations. And he gives us authority to change what's going on around us if we'll speak according to what he wants spoken. Yes? The flip side of that is if we'll speak according to our flesh or we'll speak according to the influence of the enemy, we also begin to prophesy things into place that the enemy wants done. Yes? We still have authority. Listen to Matthew 16, 15. It says, Jesus said to them, Who do you say I am? He's talking to Peter. Okay, he's, he's walking with his disciples, talking about who people in the community are saying he is. He says, Who do you say I am? And Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Simon, you're blessed because God didn't show you, God, people didn't show you that. God revealed that to you. That's a revelation that you got from God. And he said, also, I say to you that you are Peter. He changed his name from Simon to Peter. And Peter means rock. <clears throat> and he said, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or gates of hell will not prevail against it. Listen, I don't think that Jesus built his church on Peter. To build a church on any man would be a really, really shaky foundation, right? 
And, and Peter was pretty messed up. He's just like us. He, he denied Jesus. He cut off some guy's ear, got in the flesh. And, you know, building the church on him. I don't think that's what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about on this declaration, this faith-filled declaration of truth, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now listen to this next one. It says, And I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What's that saying? He's given authority to our words that affects the spirit realm. And what happens in the spirit realm affects what happens in the natural. It's like a circular thing. So he gives us authority to speak into situations that affect not only the natural realm, but also the spirit. Does that, like, holy smokes, I didn't think about that? Yeah, he trusts us with a lot, doesn't he? <clears throat> Listen to Revelation 12, 11. It says, and they overcame him. It's talk, Jesus is talking about the saints. He said, they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the lamb. In other words, they're born again. They're saved. Okay? They got a confidence enabled, empowered by the blood of the lamb. And they overcame him by the word of their testimony. And they didn't love their lives even to death. So we come overcome Satan knowing that we're saved. We've got that power, that authority in our salvation. But what's that second part? By the word of their testimony. testimony. That your testimony isn't, well, back in 1969, I prayed the sinner's prayer and, and Jesus came and saved me. That testimony is what you speak about what's going on in your life, how God's interacting in your life, his power, his authority in your life. God set me free from a spirit of intimidation. <clears throat> he is providing for me on a regular basis. Last week, I had need and, and provision came. That's my testimony, yes? That's the things that I'm speaking. I, I'm speaking God stuff. I'm speaking life into my situation. The other, the other side of that is I can be, be saying, you know, looking at the world and saying, oh, this world's going to hell in a handbasket. Everything's falling apart. You see what I'm saying? We, we can choose life or we can choose death. We can speak life, we can speak death. And it matters because we loose things into the spirit realm. Yes? Listen to this. You remember the account of, of Israel coming out of Egypt Yes? And, and they came through the Red Sea, into the desert. They spent 40 years wandering around in the desert, ticking God off because they never believed in Him, they never trusted Him. <clears throat> but they finally got right to the edge where they were going to go across into the Promised Land, and they spent, sent 12 spies in to check out the land. Remember that? And bring back a report. 12 spies went in, 12 spies came back. 10 of them came back saying what? That's too much. They're giants. We're grasshoppers. They'll kill us. What are they speaking? God's plan or the enemy's plan? God actually told them, I'm I have given you this land. Yes? Two people, Joshua and Caleb, came back. What did they say? We can take them. We can take them. Doesn't matter what it looks like. God gave it to us. He said we can. We can. Let's go kill them. Let's go wipe them out. Whose plan was that? That's God's plan. God already gave him the land. He said, I'm sending you in and I'll drive them out before you. He had told him that. So they saw the same thing, but it was... Exactly. They, they walked in and they saw the same land. They saw the same people. They saw the same circumstance. But 10 of them said, we're going to get wiped out. We're going to get killed. They had no faith in God. They didn't speak God's plan. They spoke the enemy's plan. Two of them came back seeing the same thing and said, looks rough, but hey, God's, God's with us. Me and God's a, a majority. Let's go. Let's take them out. He spoke God's plan. Yes? That's the difference. We can speak life or we can speak death. We can give authority to the plan of God or we can give authority to the plan of the enemy. Listen to what God did as a result of this. Down in verse 28. Said, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have what? Just as you have spoken in my hearing, what? I will do to you. 
the very thing that they spoke, their word of faith, God made come to pass. And what they said was, I didn't read the rest of that, but I'll read it to you. So, so the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept. This is, this is what, where they went with the, the spies that came back. And the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, in case you think complaining against leaders isn't serious. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had what? Died, died in Egypt, or if we had died in this wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us out to fall by the sword, that our wives and children will become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? What are they saying? It'd be better for us to be in bondage than to follow you. It'd be better for us to be in bondage to our enemy than to follow you. That's what they were saying to God. And he says, fine, I'll give you what you say. And they all died in the desert, except for the children which he took in. He made a covenant with Abraham to have a people out of his descendants, and there's children that went in were the descendants that he continued the, his people with. The rest of them got what they asked for. Again, we either speak blessing or curse, life or death, God's plan or the enemy's plan. We've got a choice of what we're going to speak, and it's going to matter. Matthew 12, 36 says, But I say to you that for every idle word that men may speak, they will what? Give an account. Ah! Think about some of the stuff I've said. I've got to give God an account for that. Every idle word, that's not like a really nasty thing, that's just like a worthless thing. Yeah? In the day of judgment, we're going to have to give account. Now listen to verse 37. For by your words you will be what? Justified. Justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Because out of the heart the mouth speaks. The things that are in my heart, the things that I believe, the things that motivate me, the things, my motives, attitudes, and desires are going to come out in what I speak, and my words are the evidence of what's in my heart. Yes? So if life is coming out of me, what's in my heart? I have a question. I mean, if where does forgiveness come in there? Like, if you use something out there and say, oh, my word. God. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you don't have to give an account for that. If, if we repent of something, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, absolutely. You know, the good news of all of this is that when we... When we speak the wrong thing, Jesus gives us the authority to turn that around. And we need to. And that's that's what we're into today with dealing with word curses. Great question, Erwin. Thank you. All right, just, just to show you, um, back before John the Baptist was born, uh, same time Mary was pregnant with Jesus, an angel, Gabriel, came to, to Zacharias, John the Baptist's dad, and he said, the, the angel had said that his wife's going to have a baby, they're old. He said, how can this be? How can I know this? For I'm an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years, which I think is funny. He said, I'm an old man, and my wife's well advanced. <laughs> he didn't call her old. Anyway. And the angel answered and said, he was a smart guy, right? And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, because you what? Did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. He spoke doubt and unbelief, didn't it? God's word came and he spoke doubt and unbelief in the face of it. So he was mute, I think, so that he wouldn't speak doubt into the situation. Think about it. John the Baptist came to prepare the way for Jesus, right? I don't think God was willing to let him speak any kind of authority for the enemy into that situation. So he hushed him. 
then when he was born, and, and the angel came and told him what to name him, he said, his name's John. Out it came, right? He spoke the word of faith that God had told him to speak. This, this is his name. And, and uh, Joshua taking Jericho, you remember that? Where they marched around the city seven times. Now Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day that, you, that I say to you shout, then you'll shout. And think about the whole uh, military plan here. Here's a bunch of people that have never been in a battle in their lives. And he says, march around the city this day, then march around the city, then march around the city. Don't do anything, just march around the city. This is our military plan. Wouldn't you be prone to be saying, what are we doing? This, this is a huge walled city. These people are ready to fight, and we're out here tramping around in our civvies. We don't, we don't have weapons. So God said, shh. And I think it was so they did not speak doubt and unbelief. Yeah? Deuteronomy 30, 19 is the, is the blessing and curses part of the Bible. It says, today I give you a choice between life and death, between blessing and curses. I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Oh, that you would choose life that you and your descendants might live. We speak blessing or we speak curse. And if we speak blessing, we choose life. It brings life to us and our descendants. Yeah? It's up to each of us to decide the course of our lives. <clears throat> now, we're going to talk generally about curses for a little bit, but what we're really after today is word curses. So this is a whole class in itself, but we're just kind of skinnying this down a little bit to get a picture of it. <clears throat> so what are blessings and curses? Here's a general description. A blessing is a good, prosperous, beneficial, positive thing or circumstances that gets released into our lives. All blessings come from God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no shadow of turning. Everything good comes from Him, yes? A curse is a withholding of blessing or, or even a, an imparting of something bad or negative or harmful, destructive into our circumstances or into our lives. And curses can come from God or from Satan. I may surprise you, but there's, a lot, there's places where God speaks curses over people or situations. Now, God created us with a purpose, and he gave us everything that we need to accomplish that purpose. You remember us talking about that? We have everything we need for life and godliness. He's given us everything. A curse can keep that from happening. It can cause you to stumble. It can cause you to not make forward progress. Okay, I'm talking about how a curse affects God's plan for our life. So what does a curse at work look like? How might it manifest? It's any number of ways, but just a couple examples. Uh, Derek Prince calls it, I, I think gives you a good picture of it. He said it's like a long evil arm that stretches out from the past. And, and it takes a hold of you and it, and it causes you not to make progress. It's a dark oppressive force that keeps us from being and doing all that God created you for. Yeah? Long arm might show up as a stumbling block. You, maybe you make a choice. To move on in life, you're like, God's, God's told you to do something and you, you make a decision, I'm going to do it. And when you, <clears throat> you can see where you need to get to, you can see what you're headed for, you've got a vision for it, and just about the time that you're ready to accomplish something, the wheels fall off. Or something happens that you can't move forward. Something stops you. And, it, and it's a frustrating thing. It's an irritating thing, Yeah. And one of the words that I really attach with curses is uncanny. And uncanny is something that just doesn't fit. It doesn't make sense. Why did this happen? It's, you know, you step off a curb and break your leg. Well, I didn't even twist. You know, why? Just things that don't make sense. They don't fit. Um, you're, you're starting into that... <clears throat> that step for the plan of God and all of a sudden 
your car breaks down, your washing machine dies, your, your furnace blows up, and you have no money to do that thing that God told you to do. I mean, you just don't have a choice anymore. Why is the timing like that? Yeah? <clears throat> maybe you get sick. Maybe, maybe somebody powerful comes against you and, and gets in your way of accomplishing. Do you hear what I'm saying? It, it's like something just reaches out and says, no, you're not going there. When we bought our farm, I forever had to fix things. Anytime I went to use a tractor, I had to fix it. Anytime time I went to mow the lawn, I had to fix the lawnmower. The sewer plugged up. The, just the well pump quit. Anything and everything, I, I couldn't accomplish it. It was like every time I went to do something, I had to stop and fix something. And after a while, I stood and looked back and I thought, I wonder if there's a curse working over this place. And what came to my mind was there was a sign there that said Green Acres on it. Any of you ever watch Green Acres? Like his tractor, the wheel always fell off and smoke rolled out. <laughs> Nothing worked, you plug something in, the breakers blew. And I thought, there's a curse on this place. And I just spoke to it. I just canceled the curse and spoke the blessing of God over the, the property and all the equipment and those kind of things. And it was one of those things where after a while I looked back and I thought, that stopped. But you have to recognize that uncanny thing. It was something that was there from my, my great uncle gave us the farm. And it was something there from when he was there. I couldn't have known it other than just revelation of the spirit. But we've got the authority to cut it off. Yes? All right. Uncanny circumstances should warn you to check for a curse. Uncanny circumstances are ones that are unexplainable, illogical, and just no reason to happen. Now, curses seem to be marked with, and these are some things that like some red flags, besides the uncanny. Disappointment, confusion, hardship, fear, frustration, failure, illness, even tragedy. You know, the fall apart syndrome. <laughs> this stuff breaking all over the place, so whatever it looks like. <clears throat> Our words can open doors for blessings and curses. Blessings and curses get released into the spirit realm by the things that we that happen in the natural and again they manifest in the natural as a result of what's going on in the spirit they're connected so what we speak makes a difference both in the spirit and the natural realm yes those things come back around spoken word seems to carry incredible power again god spoke the worlds into existence and we also have a certain amount of creative power and authority to speak things into being now listen I am not stupid enough to think I can stand here and say, I have a million dollars, I have a million dollars, I have a million dollars. That's nonsense, okay? What I'm talking about is if I speak God's word, he'll empower that. His word will not re return void. It'll accomplish what he sent it for. If we speak his word and his timing, it'll happen. If we speak the enemy's plan, he'll empower that. He'll take it and use it as a legal right to impart his plan and purpose into our lives or situations yeah if we understood the power of the spoken word I have written here we talk a lot less and choose our words a lot more carefully if we had any, any idea what's happening when we speak and I put a couple scriptures in here I'm going to read these really quick power of the tongue the tongue is a small thing but what an enormous damage it can do a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire, and the tongue is a flame of fire. It's full of wickedness and can ruin your whole life. Yay! What a happy scripture, right? It can turn the entire course of your life into a blazing flame of destruction, for it is set on fire by hell itself. And I think that's talking about your tongue driven by the flesh. Without the Spirit of God driving your tongue, that's what it's like. It, it, it does power for the enemy. James 3.8 says, No one can tame the tongue. It's an uncontrollable evil full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it breaks out into curses against those who have been made in the image of God. So blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Yeah? Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
Proverbs 15, 4. A soothing tongue is a tree of life, but perversion in it crushes the spirit. And I talk about what we can do to other people. We can crush other people if, if we foolishly use words and speak negative things over them. And we're going to push into that a little bit. So let's, let's get practical. We and other people that we give authority can speak things into our lives that we really don't want. A parent can speak kid, things into their kids' lives that they really don't want to speak in. You know, in, in a moment of anger, you're so stupid and you'll never amount to anything. What did you just do? You just spoke a curse over that kid. Now, why does it matter? Because I really didn't mean it, but the enemy, legalistic twit that he is, who wants to destroy your child, will take your words of authority and use them as a legal right in their life to make them act stupid and never amount to anything. But like Erwin said, we've got authority in Jesus to recognize that and cut it off, cancel it, and replace it with a blessing. Okay, so this isn't a hopeless thing, but I want us to think about this so that we recognize them. Think about you get mad at you get mad at somebody or something. Damn you! What did you just do? Suppose I'd say that to my wife. I wouldn't, but suppose I would. What did I just do? I just cursed one of God's creations. His provision for a spouse, my other half, I partly cursed myself. To damn something is to condemn it. Yes? And that gets thrown around so often, you wonder why the lawnmower doesn't work when you damn it every time it doesn't work. Right? <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? We, we do this stuff without even thinking about it. We need to become conscious of, of what we're speaking and, and at the same time to recognize what other people are speaking over us because I've had people speak stuff to me and I just say, I'm not receiving that in the name of Jesus. You know? That, that's, that's not who I am. That's not what I am and I'm not receiving that. And we need to do that. Particularly with people that we've given authority. Does that make sense? People say stuff like, oh, I'd be better off dead, like the Israelites said. It'd be better if we died in the desert. Yeah? Well, what did you just do? You just gave legal right to a spirit of death. I'd, I'd be better off if I was dead. What am I saying? <laughs> death is better than this life. Bring it on, enemy. What do we need to do with that? Cut off that legal right. Cancel that thing. Speak the truth in the face of it. Speak blessing in the face of it. Yes? Uh, one of the examples that I like that Derek Prince used was a guy talking about his wife's cooking, and he said something like, you're, I'm so sick of your cooking, you'll never be able to cook. Well, what did he just speak in? Every time he eats his wife cooking, he's going to get sick. And no matter how hard she tries to be a good cook, that long arm, dark arm from the past, from that curse, reaches out and, and burns the chicken or whatever it is, you know. And, and yet you think, well, that's stupid. Don't care. It can happen. I'm not saying everything that gets spoken over you brings negative, but it gives opportunity for that. And if you recognize those negative things happening, you need to be looking for what? Open the door for them to get in. Ron and I or really watch each other's back for this. You know, when one of us hears the other one saying something, it's like, do you realize what you just said? And you need to just humble yourself right there and, and renounce that thing, cut it off, cancel it, replace it with truth. Just don't even mess around giving it five minutes. Keep a short leash on that stuff. As soon as you see it, deal with it. We're going to show you how in a minute. <clears throat> now, we need to understand this, this isn't a game. <laughs> This is life and death. The enemy hates us. He wants to destroy us. And if we'll give him opportunity, he'll do it. Yeah? Um, can anyone inadvertently, like, if, if, I'm, if I'm mad at Brian and I say, well, I'm just going to speak a curse over him. Can I do that? Will it make a difference?
Witchcraft people do this all the time. Satanists do it all the time. Okay. Now I'm going to feel like I'm I'm wobbling back and forth on this, but I'm I'm, I'm going to pr press into this a little bit. Look at Proverbs 26:2. Like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without a what? Cause will not alight. In other words, if there's no legal right for it, it can't stick to you. Now, if they pick a place where they see my weakness, um, if they know that I deal with fear, so they pick that place of fear to speak the curse, then there's something for it to stick to. Does that make sense? If I hear that that curse was spoken and I get fearful, I, I give it credence, then I make a landing place for it. But if I hear that thing and say, I cancel that by the authority of Jesus, that is not going to come near me. <laughs> or I recognize the place where I'm fearing and letting that thing in, and I deal with the fear and cut it off, take away the legal right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can you give more of an example, like a word example? Like if they say, you use fear, but are you saying like uh, if they would say, you will not. He is going to fail at his job okay. because he is afraid that he's going to get fired. That he's, he's afraid that other people are coming and going to take his job. So that, that fear may start coming to pass. Those, those situations may be released in the spirit realm to cause other people to come after his job. Okay, I'm, I'm making this up, but... But if I recognize what's going on and I renounce that fear of losing my job and say, God, you put me here and by the authority of Jesus, I'm staying here until you take me out. No devil in hell can thwart your plans unless I let him and I don't let him. So I, I, I renounce my fear. I ask you to forgive me for it. I trust you, Jesus. And I cancel every word curse that's been spoken over me in the name of Jesus. Yeah? And it, and it will disempower those things that are going on around me to try to bring that to pass. You really have to be vigilant then. Be like aware of what's going on in our life then. And it's not that we need, you're right, but it's not that we need to be worried, but we need to be watching. The Holy Spirit speaks things to us, shows us what we need to see. You know, we're going to take some time today and listen. Holy Spirit, show me any place where there's been a word curse spoken over me that's affected my life that you want me to cut off today. Yeah, I, I, something happened the other day that I, I thought of that happened when I was in, playing basketball in high school that I, that I cut off. I have no idea whether it's water or whether it's affecting anything in my life, but it came to me. Heaven's to murder, Troy. I'm not thinking about my basketball coach from high school, but he spoke stuff over me that a grown man should have never done to a kid. You know, that was just wrong. But at the time, I looked up to him. He was my basketball coach. I gave him authority. But looking back by the Spirit, I'm thinking, that was wrong. <laughs> so I cut it off. Does it make any difference? God wouldn't have shown it to him if it didn't matter. Yeah? So you say we need to be vigilant. We need to be obedient. We need to be listening to the voice of the Spirit. Yeah? And if we see that red flag of un uncanny, the frustration, the I just keep running into this project and I keep hitting a wall, uh, you know, it's like a bungee strap. I run ahead with all my might and then I get snapped back here and I have to start all over again. Those kind of things pick, indicate there might be a curse working. Yes? Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Good. Right. Okay. What are, you, what are you speaking over those that give you authority in, your, in their lives? You know, what are, what are you speaking over? We've been talking about mostly about ourselves and what's coming on us, but what are you speaking about those other people? Maybe you've got natural kids. Maybe you've got spiritual kids. Maybe you've got a spouse or, or even a, a boyfriend, girlfriend kind of thing. Somebody that gives you authority in their life, are you speaking life or are you speaking death? Yeah? And just, and, and the positive of that really encourage you um, with your spouse. Speak life over them. Pray with them. Pray blessings over them. 
um, your kids. Uh, God, I thank you that this, this is a child of God, that she's holy and, and that you have a plan for her life. And God, I thank you that she is going to walk out that plan and you speak God's plan over that kid that they can hear it. Yeah? You speak blessing over them intentionally. Does that make sense? Not only try to catch up from the things that you did wrong, but intentionally do it right. <laughs> and I wrote there, the good news is that as believers in Christ, we carry authority to cut off the enemy's authority in our lives and in the lives of those he gives that give us authority. There, listen, we are not stuck in our mess. God spoke that to me a couple of years ago. We are not stuck in our mess. There is nothing that can keep us from doing what God wants us to do, except us either not seeing it or not being willing to put the work into doing it. Because he's given us every, everything we need for life and godliness. Yes? That's some good news. So as he shows us things, we respond. Luke 10, 17. Then the 70 returned. Jesus sent out 70 disciples to minister. To minister freedom to people, actually. To set people free. Okay? And, and they came back saying this. Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to do what? Trample on serpents and scorpions. It's not snakes and bugs. Okay? Because listen to the next part. And over all the power of... The enemy. Jesus gives his disciples power and authority in the spirit realm to deal with all the stuff that the enemy tries to send against us. And it says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. In, in the spirit realm and in, in all of eternity, the enemy cannot thwart God's plan in our lives. He can't hurt us. There are things that can happen in this life that physically hurt us, yeah. But... Jesus is talking about eternity, and he says, if you will walk in his authority, nothing will hurt you. Questions, thoughts? I know I crammed a whole lot of stuff into a little space here just to try to, to, to head us in the right direction. So if I smoke you, please ask questions. Okay. Okay. We're going to go into a little bit of a ministry time here. Um, on your paper, it says dealing with issues. These issues is a lot like dealing with strongholds that we, that we did a couple weeks ago. Uh, by Jesus' authority, we can renounce and cut off all authority that we have given the enemy in our lives or the lives of others. We can stand in his authority and do this work. In place of each curse that you deal with, you need to speak the appropriate blessing. Okay, Speak in the opposite of that thing. Confess the sin of cursing something that God has created and blessed. Repent of it. Make a conscious decision to change the way you talk and ask the Holy Spirit to help you with it. You know, we can make a decision, well, I'm never going to say something like that again, and that's a good decision. But we need the Holy Spirit to poke us when we, if we screw up, yeah? <clears throat> Release yourself and other people from the curse by the authority of Jesus. It's best to deal specifically with every situation that you can. In other words, if, if the Holy Spirit reminds you that one time your dad said you're worthless and you'll never amount to anything, use those words. I, I cancel the lie that I am worthless and will never amount to anything. And I announce the truth that I am your child and I will do everything that you called and created me to do. Yeah? I speak the blessing in the, in the face of the curse. But if you don't know the specific, sometimes we need to just do general. But if, it's, if you know the specific, use it exactly. There's also value in cutting off every word, curse, and soulish prayer that's been spoken over you and your family, your ministry, whatever. So <clears throat> an example prayer is, by the authority of Jesus Christ, I renounce having said that, whatever it is that you said. And I confess this is sin. I ask you, Father, to forgive me. I choose not to do this anymore, and I ask you to help me to recognize it if I do so that I can deal with it. 
by the authority of Jesus, I release myself or that person from the curse. I bless, ask you to bless me or I bless that person. And I declare the opposite of the curse, the blessing over that person or over myself. Yeah. And we're going to spend some time listening for the Holy Spirit and, and, and write, write things down. But I, I want to jump ahead of it just a little bit. That there's, there's a general prayer there. Uh, and even, you know, I was thinking this morning, if you, if you know what's going on in the world around us, the extreme lefts really don't like the Christians. And there's a lot of word curses and negative things that are being spoken over us and the things of God. And I think just as a general, my wife and I do this often. I'll, I'll pray a prayer something like this. By the authority of Jesus, I cancel every word, curse, and negative thing that's been spoken over me, about me, my ministry, my family, anything that I'm responsible for. And I speak blessing, life, health, wholeness, prosperity, success over all that I am and over all that I have, over all that I'm responsible for in Jesus' name. And I declare that I will be and do all that God has created, called and created me, for in Jesus' name and for his glory. And I praise you, Jesus, for the authority that I, you have given me and for the fact that the enemy cannot hold me captive or, or hold me back anymore. Hallelujah. It's a declaration, you know. It's a, it's a walking in the authority that, that Jesus has given us. So that's kind of a general thing because I don't know what people spoke over me. You know, maybe somebody watched the teaching on YouTube and just started a rail on me. I, I don't have to wear that. It can't affect me if I don't cut that stuff off. Though. Yes? So we're going to listen and we're going to go after specifics, but also I think we'll do a general prayer as we finish up. Questions? Well, let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you reveal the plans of the enemy against our lives. That you love us and that you give us everything that we need to live in freedom and victory. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your blood. And we stand that in the power of your blood. And we just thank you that we are not stuck in anything because of you. So Holy Spirit, as we quiet ourselves and we listen, we just invite you to show us any places in our lives where there are word curses spoken over us or we've spoken things over ourselves, anything that has attached itself to us that we need to cut off, we ask you to show us. We just open ourselves up and we, we choose to be teachable and open to you. And we praise you for what you're going to do. Amen. Let's just take some time and listen. Write down what you, what you hear. Don't question it. Just write it down. It may be something that you don't even think about. <laughs>